sprint demos yes that is what we are talking about today we're going to be discussing what are the things that you should be looking out for when you're getting a demo for all the user stories that were accomplished in the sprint that'll be up next Today is just one of those days that you wish you could just have a picnic outside. I mean, it's a bright day. It's still kind of cold, but not too cold. The sun is up, the sky is clear, there's a light breeze. I mean, this day is gorgeous, like just wonderful. And I have a pond behind me, as you can see. And sometimes the ducks come by and swim in the pond, but I haven't seen them all season. So I don't know if they're gonna come. Um, so that kind of sucks because you know I like to watch ducks and birds and butterflies <laughs> and just now my daughter was out here playing with the dog so she was having fun too I'll put that clip right here Hi. so yeah it's a great day it's wonderful and I wish I could do the whole video out here but I'm kind of scared that the dog's gonna come out and start barking. So I'm just gonna go inside and finish talking to you about the Sprint Demo. Yeah, let's talk about it. So you've spent the entire Sprint working on something and now it's time to demonstrate what it is that you've worked on and how it works. Welcome to the demo. <laughs> so that's what the demo is. The demo is basically them showing you what it is that they've worked on and how it looks to make sure they get sign off from the business as to yes, this piece of functionality, this process, whatever it is that you did during the sprint actually meets the requirements, right? Or the user story acceptance criteria. So I've been doing a series on the Agile Business Analyst and I've done a several other videos already. I've done a video on the sprint retrospective and that will be here. Uh, and that video is really about how to give feedback at the end of a sprint so that you can improve for the next sprint. I also have done a video on the sprint planning and all the activities that need to happen for sprint planning. And that video is here as well, you can see that. Um, and that talks a lot about how to prepare and what you need to do as a business analyst, as a product owner, to be ready for the next sprint planning. I also have a video on the daily stand-up and so you can get examples of the kinds of things that you would hear during a daily stand-up and some of, some of the things that you would say as the business analyst um, in a daily stand-up and that video is here. Then I have a video on the acceptance criteria. <laughs> I've done a couple videos, so there's a quite a bit now. The acceptance criteria video talks about how to lay out an acceptance criteria, how to break it up, what is the right level of detail. And that's a very interesting video, which you should definitely check out. And it's also here. And then it takes you to this video, which is on the demo. So it'd be great if you could go through those other videos so you can incrementally get more knowledge so that by the time you get to this video, you can understand more of what I'm about to say. So the demo is really showing off what you've done and making sure you get an agreement that this meets the, um, uh, the business need. So who is doing the demo? Typically the QA person, the quality assurance person is the one who's actually showing the demo. They would have set up all the scenarios and make sure they can demonstrate and show all the different, you know, happy paths and things that go wrong and all that stuff so that you can see how the functionality is being handled. And it doesn't have to be like just the IT, um, demo it could also be a process it could be just flowing through some new changes so demo can be different ways right it's not always going to be a system demo but for the most part for most of us who work in IT it's a system demo right so I'm going to talk about that a lot uh, in this video so the demo is being done by the QA to the rest of the agile team right to make sure they get sign off especially from the business side the product owner the business analyst 
But it could be that the business analyst herself or himself is doing the demo also for external teams such as you know your executives, your customer service people, training and stuff like that. So you could be doing a demo as well. Um, but typically the QA is a person who you know puts all of it together to show all the pieces and the different scenarios that they want to show. Who is in the demo? So the business analyst, definitely the product owner, if you have one, um, the QA definitely. Some people don't have the developers in there, but I think the developers should be in the, the demo because they're the one who built it. And so if you have a question, they can answer much faster and they can probably come up with a better solution quicker than if you had to explain to the QA who have to explain to them and then come back and all that stuff. So I think it's good to have the developer in the QA. If you worked on a story in the sprint, you're in the, in the demo, you know, that would be great. Um, so it's typically those people in there and uh, they run through all of the different scenarios and show you how the system responds or how the process responds based on different inputs and so on. So while you're doing the demo, there's a couple of things that you should look out for, especially if you're the person who wrote the acceptance criteria to make sure that they actually match. So it's great to um, just show how it functions. That's great. You might check all of the, the boxes, but you also have to take into consideration first time activities so for example if you're setting up a company for the first time and you have a system how would the system respond if there's no data to show would it just show a blank page or would it show some error so you have to account for the first time flow so if it's a let's say it's a it's a banking app what if the person is going in there for the first time how do you help them get from where they are to where they're going so you need to make sure that it covers the first time flow of course that has to be an acceptance criteria but at the same time you don't have to spell out every single step sometimes the developer has to know that if it's the first time you don't show a blank screen you know you show like a you know loading message or something like that you know what i mean so just things like that you have to be careful of to make sure that you cover the other thing to look out for in your demo is validation. So it's great that it works, you know, when everything is inputted properly, but what if there isn't the right input? How does the system respond? How does the process respond? If somebody puts in the wrong information, what do they do? How do they recover? So you have to make sure you cover that in the demo to make sure that it works when they get bad, bad data as well. Um, and if you have things like, let's say, required fields, if you have a numeric field that's required, some systems will put zero just as a default. But what if zero is a valid input, but you didn't actually cover that and it's a required field, but it already has zero. When you click save or when you try to exit, does it validate that zero or does it show you blank first and let you force you to put in zero? So you got to make sure you cover <laughs> the validation things right in your demo to make sure that it works how it's supposed to work um, other things to look out for are ux issues so if you have a ux designer and they want to take on the ux design issues fine but sometimes you've written your your acceptance criteria for uh, functionality and your requirements for functionality but then the design has to be there so let's say Either you give them a mock-up or let's say you had a UX person design the mock-up or let's say you just let them be free and design a mock-up based on some existing template that we have. You got to make sure it still works for this new feature, right? You don't want to have too much spacing over here. You might see the font color different from other places in the system or maybe the text type, the font, you know, the font size, font weight, things like that. You have to be careful to look at those manual detail things because you don't want um, some changes over here and not the same over here. If they're using like a global CSS file or whatever, and it's like everybody's going to have the same color and the same font, fine. But there are systems, there are, you know, features that over here looks different than over here. And you want to make sure you, you, you keep the consistency. So in your demo, you're looking out for those things as well. If you show a table in one part of the system for similar data and over here you're showing kind of fields, you know, so you don't want to dictate design, but at the same time in the demo is a place where you need to spot where there are flaws in your design or flaws in whoever design it is. If it's the developer using, you know, whatever component and there is a change, he made a change over here and it affected over here. You got to make sure you point that out in the demo. The other thing too in the demo is to make sure you get a good demo. A good demo means that it has enough data 
to make sense because sometimes because we're testing and sometimes you don't have a real client or a real use case to follow you tend to test um, with just test and dummy data and sometimes that dummy data does not reflect real world um, scenarios and so you'll be testing and you're like oh yeah this works it's great it's wonderful uh-huh good 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 when it gets into the production you're like what happened things start breaking over here and that doesn't work and blah 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 now they can always say QA didn't test it properly but really the whole team is at fault because we all sat in the demo and agreed that this met the business need so you got to make sure that you get a good demo with real world data if it means you need to go copy some production data and you sign an NDA or something and you get some real data in there, put an environment that's just for testing that you can do, or maybe you copy your production environment in a QA environment or whatever, but you need real data to understand the real challenges. So that's very important as well. The other thing to take note of when you're doing a demo is not to be too um, shy to speak up because sometimes they're going through a whole list of things they want to show you. You've done, I don't know, 10, 15 stories during the sprint and everybody wants to show what they did and they want to say, go through here and okay, we're done with this, moving on to this. You have to be willing to stop and say, stop, wait, go back, go back to the screen, scroll down over here. There's a problem right there. That validation is not right. That number is not right. That design is not right. Whatever. Because sometimes they're flipping through the thing so fast, you can't even keep up. You have to be willing to stop. And it doesn't matter if it's a simple thing and that was what the acceptance criteria said and all that stuff. Even if the acceptance criteria said it and they did it all the acceptance criteria said it, if when you see it in the demo, it doesn't make sense anymore, you got to say, okay, this is a problem. We need a story to correct this problem. And maybe the acceptance criteria wasn't right. We're agile, right? We can do that stuff. So don't think because, oh yeah, I wrote it. So now that it's demoing, it doesn't look good. I'm going to keep it because I don't want to point out myself that I made a mistake from the beginning. You are, you, this is a team effort and it's okay if you made a mistake and you spot it in time to fix it before it gets to production because you don't want to wait until the client sees it to say, oh yeah, I saw it, but I didn't want to say nothing, right? <laughs> you got to fix your own problem, right? You got to. You gotta call it out even if it's you that made the mistake. The other thing too is whenever there's an issue that comes out of the demo, we don't go back to the acceptance criteria and change it there. We don't go back to the same story and change it there. Typically, um, the developer did what was in this story. So they would mark it as done because it was done and tested. If there's a problem at the demo, you'd have to say, okay, here's a bug. You open a bug or you open another story as an enhancement or you do something like that. So typically, you know, most companies have their own process for how they treat enhancements versus bugs versus things that was just missed in the acceptance criteria. But typically you don't want to go back and keep redoing the same story over and over. You want to finish that, know that it was done, and then you open some other stories because of whatever you found in the demo. That's typically how most companies do it. I don't know how your company does it, but I don't think it's a good idea to keep going back to the same story and make it edits after the sprint, right? So that's not a good uh, a practice. All right, so those are the things I think you should be aware of and the things that you should look out for when you're getting your sprint demo. Now, if you are the one doing the demo, of course, you have to do a lot of prep work to make sure you get all the data, make sure it's you know properly representing all the things that were done in the sprint, um, and to make sure if you're explaining it to um, external staff, you have to be more meticulous, explain the whole scenario that got you to this point in the demo because sometimes they may not know and you don't want to assume that they know things that they don't know so you have to be um, more detailed and also be more patient because they may ask you more questions than the, the technical team would because they don't have as much background knowledge as you would so more patience more willingness to explain and uh, more detail if you're explaining it or if you're demoing it to clients or to external team members Okay, y'all, so that's what I have for you on the sprint demo. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, please, please. You know what I'm going to say, right? Subscribe. Please subscribe. And uh, I will see you next time in the next video. Thank you.